Hi folks, hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. I want to um, just read a few extracts from an article called the BBC Birmingham Koran Facts Fiasco written on July 23rd, 2015. You can download this article and it's by uh, R. Joseph Hoffman who is a uh, uh, quite a considerable scholar in early patristics and uh, he doesn't agree with evangelicalism he doesn't agree with uh, the Christian faith as I would understand it so you know in fact if you read the, the beginning of the article he's quite cynical about the New Testament he says to this surgically clean I'll read some of the article but I just want to bring your attention to uh, the issue of the Quran in Birmingham that we have. Or the Quranic uh, text that we have in Birmingham. He goes on, it is one of the cardinal tenets of Islam that the Quran was essentially complete in the Prophet's lifetime, written down very soon after the time of Uthman before the end of the 20th, 7th century. His further tenet that the exact wording of the text has remained unchanged from the time of its revelation until today. Quote, the Quran, a standard uh, web-based information site, offers the following standard orthodox appraisal. The Quran is a record of the exact words revealed by God through the angel Gabriel to the prophet Muhammad. It was memorized by Muhammad and then dictated to his companions and written down by the scribes who cross-checked it during his lifetime. Not one word of its 114th chapter, surahs, has been changed over the centuries, so that the Quran is the very detailed, the unique and miraculous text which was revealed to Muhammad 14 centuries ago, www.islamcity.com. Search for what is the Quran. He goes on, the scholar goes on, to this surgically clean declaration of the authenticity one might want to compare the tortured history of the New Testament academic study has shown that nothing was written by Jesus. Nothing was, well, everybody knows that. I mean, you don't have to be an academic to know that. Nothing was written in Aramaic. The language he spoke and the written record, again, there's, he's assuming certain things there. Modern biblical criticism, though it did not begin as this, has been for the last two centuries a systematic exploration of redaction, alteration, variations of theological finessing of text. There are no original manuscripts and, and there is today no, ex, no possibility of finding one that could endure be called original. None existed in the time of Jesus or his followers as far as we know and it re really not until the end of the first century that written gospels begin to appear, not until the second that we begin to see hard. The point here is, is very very cynical but even when you come under this cynicism, if you know your stuff, you can see that actually he's verifying uh, the Gospels there. He's admitting that we do have early Gospels, and if we have these early Gospels, it shows that there were copies of these Gospels, and that we have a, a right to believe that we have the, the Gospels that Jesus, uh, that, that were written by his disciples uh, and followers uh, early in the first century. Uh, if you go to uh, Cannon Fodder website by Dr. Kruger and you can look at the Christian position and, uh, from a scholarly perspective there. Now, let's get on to the Quran. Now you might say, well, it's double standards because you don't agree with what this scholar says concerning the Bible, so why are you agreeing with what the Muslim scholar says, uh, what, what he says about uh, Islamic scholarship? Well. The reason why I'm reading it is just to show you that there are some questions out there that the Muslims are not willing to answer. That's the reason why I'm reading it. So let's read. The belief that the Quran had an entirely different history from the biblical text was called into question by a, uh, a manuscript from which an existing text has been scraped or washed to make room for another to avoid the expense of additional writing material known as DAM 012711 discovered by Muslims in 1972 at the ancient great mosque of Sana'a in Yemen. 
excuse me, aided by ultraviolet photography, excuse me, the Palimer, uh, the Palim set was shown to contain many differences compared with today's Arabic Quran. The range from different and missing words and similar spellings to change order of surahs and words within verses. The find is part of a bundle of parchments thought until a few days ago to be the oldest surviving copies of the Quran. According to Gert Puin, a Western ex expert in the early text of the Quran, the Palim set known as DAM01271 contains at least 38 Quran leaves. It is undoubtedly extracted from a book rather than notes used by imams for the purpose of recalling stories learned by Rod. They were each written on parchment with an approximate size. Sorry, got an itchy nose. Since on the majority of the leaves a primary text is visible and both texts contain parts of over 70% of today's Quran, the Palam set must be a remnant of two previously complete yet different Qurans. For folio 6.2 contains Surah 9780 in the last visible primary writing and Surah 30.26.40 in the better physical, visible secondary writing. The Yemi Quran provides almost conclusive evidence that the text of the Quran was not settled in the 7th century and underwent the same kind of editorial remnant that parchment manuscripts routinely went through in the process of copying and transcription. The Yemen Quran story is repeated in the works of the Karnaka Project scholars at the University of Tübingen. Examined a Quranic manuscript written in Kufic script, one of the oldest forms of Arabic writing, using carbon 4 dating, dating on the three samples of the manuscript parchment, the researchers concluded that it was more than 90% likely to have originated in the period of 649 to 67. The Tubinic Quran also showed clear signs of alteration, increasingly the probability that the Quran text was altered over time. The discovery in Birmingham University, touted by the BBC and aptly embraced by Muslim scholars and others as the oldest copy of the Quran, sorry, discovered a ri is riddled, as Professor ben Spencer argues, with journalist error. The BBC story, trumpeted by news agencies all over the world, is one of those examples of media reporting about religion based on wishful thinking and on ill-disguised hankering for stories about miracles that occasionally remind us that journalism is not science nor history or even reasonable analysis. Eventually, experts will chime in with the questions, the most pioignant of which will be these. Islamic tradition itself asserts that the Quran was finalized during the reign of Caliph Uthman, who ordered other versions burned. The Dawn of the Rock do not respect the Quranic ordering of the surahs as they have come to exist in modern editions of the Quran. It would be anomalous indeed if a text arguably dated from so close to the Prophet's lifetime followed the ordering of surah chapters used in later versions of the text. The earliest literary reference to the Quran as a complete book is from the early 8th century in the context of a debate between Christians and monks from the monastery of Hale, an Arabic nobleman. The dialogue suggests that Muhammad taught a portion of what Muslims believed in the Quran and a portion, portion in flea floating surah al-Baqarah al and Gigi and in Twer. The surah the monk mentioned is now, now fully incorporated in the Quran but in his time was not, since he knows it as a standalone book, al Bakara, It is the second and longest surah in the Quran we possess it today. The Birmingham University professor David Thomas, who has made extravagant claims for the discovery, does not seem to be aware that he is arguing against his own position, since as for a gospel there is no standard prototype of the Quran, which could possibly show whether the original text had been altered or modified. How can we possibly be sure that the thin series of verses available to an original word order? The Yemen and Tubingen Quranic extracts show just the opposite. Under ultraviolet examination, they reveal editorial modifications or bleeding beneath the subscribed text. As Robert Spencer correctly asks, if the only reliable date we have is from the organic material, we still need to date the ink as Hijazi script, while early is common in parchment found in this part of the Arabian, uh, Arabian Peninsula. 4. 
The nature of the leaves themselves is puzzling. Bits of Surahs 18 and 20 containing the story about Moses along with material about Dull. Uh, Koranian, who was usually assumed to be Alexander the Great, and the Christian story of the seven sleepers of Ephesus and Surah 19, with an extended retelling of the birth, virgin birth of Jesus Christ. These are some of the most obviously derivative sections of the entire Quran, stories which the Quran cannibalizes without attribution, increasing the likelihood that what we have is not the Quran at all, but fragments of stories that were eventually incorporated into the Quran at a later period. Compositely, this may be an exciting archaeological find since it would tell us something about the real process under which the book was compiled using fragments of other books. Anyhow, you can read the article for yourself, it's a very interesting article. It's called uh, The BBC Birmingham Quran Facts Fiasco, and you can get it on uh, Joseph R. Joseph Hoffman. Work uh, dot wordpress dot com bbc birmingham Quran facts fiasco uh, what what the article is showing is that a couple of things number one how the media is biased to, to be pro-islam without checking the facts number two how the muslims uh, scholars are easy to manipulate people by saying that the Quran has not changed but actually not telling you the full story and number three that there are particular problems like the ultraviolet light in looking at the, the Quranic text and seeing that underneath there has been writing and that there has been changes to the text. So those are just three issues but the text itself is showing internal inconsistency that there is um, so he writes, so to repeat, what we have at Birmingham is the discovery of leaves of parchment probably recycled and scraped and used by a religious teacher to record bits and memorise and evade it from sources that finally make their way into the Quran. That there should be some overlap in these extracts and later additions of the Quran as copied and printed is not at all surprising, but as there is no prototype, it can hardly be said to be evidence of an unalterable textual tradition. There is no compelling reason to think that this slim discovery proves the Inavailability of the Islamic holy book. On Vidiv indicates any doctrine, in fact, if treated intelligently and using the methods of Western textual criticism, this could shed light on how, how books like the Quran evolve over time to become companions of the words of men regarded as the prophets and teachers of the tradition. So far, however, we see little evidence that the fire will be treated in that way. As Gerd Puin has said, my idea is that the Quran is a kind of cocktail of texts that were not at all understood even at the time of Muhammad. Many of them even be a be hundred years older than Islam itself. Even within Islamic tradition there is a huge body of contradictory information, including a significant Christian substratum. One can derive a whole Islamic anti-history from them if one wants. What we have at Birmingham perfectly illustrates this point. So there we are. It's not all what it's, you're told as, as Muslims. There are issues here about your ancient texts that have shown change and manipulation and editorial process. And you need to can be honest about that and you need to be upfront about that as Muslims and you're not. You're actually hiding the truth from the public when you say the Quran has not changed. Thank you for listening. Like I said, from a Christian position, go to the Urban Project, go to Canon Fodder by uh, Kruger website, Canon Fodder, and that will give you a Christian perspective on the text of the Bible. And uh, Bruce Metz's uh, textual criticism book, you can get that on my website, jasonburnspreacher.com. You can get that free, you can download it, and you can digest it, and it will be a blessing to you. So thank you for listening, and God bless you.